Hello, I am Foligon, and in this video, I'm going to show you an easy way to prepare your 3D models for molding in ZBrush. I've already prepared some of the objects here for the demonstration, but it should be pretty simple for you to create these if you want to follow along. So I have a simple cube here that I've actually split into two separate cubes, and we'll talk more about those here shortly. And I also have a sphere inside of those, which is going to be the first object that we mold. So let me go ahead and hide that one half of our mold. And you can kind of see how this is set up here. So our sphere is indented into our half of our cube. So to actually get a preview of what this would look like to mold this object, let's go ahead and turn on Live Boolean and then set our sphere to negative in our subtool menu. So now we're getting to see what that subtractive object would look like. And if I want to see it on the other side, I can simply hide one of my meshes and flip that around. The extra information in this part of the mold is simply what's called a key, and I have that set up on the other side as a positive. The objective of that shape is to make it so that the two halves of the mold can only fit together in one specific way, which is why the one keyed piece up here is turned at a particular 45 degree angle. So we have our sphere subtracting from our mold, and that's all well and good. But how do we know if there's going to be any issues with this object? Now, there are some problems that could occur with this sphere, depending on where it's placed in our mold. For instance, if the sphere was placed so far into our mold that the seam line was no longer in the center of the object, this sphere would be very difficult to remove from this mold, particularly if the object and mold are very hard or brittle. So how do we find that perfect seam line for our object? So very quickly, let's look at how we can find that. I'm going to rotate my camera around to the front, hold the shift key to snap, and turn off perspective. I'll turn on solo mode down here so that I can see only my sphere, and scroll down into the polygroups menu and click on group front. And then when I rotate around, we can see exactly where that seam line is. So we can snap to the side and you can see that that is putting that seam line directly down the middle. So this group front button here, based on the angle that we have applied for the tolerance, which is set to 90 by default, is showing us all the geometry that is front facing, essentially facing our camera from this view. And then we can use that information to figure out where we want our seam line to be placed. So if I turn on transparent here, we can see that my mold is pretty much aligned exactly with where that seam line is. So that is the center line for our sphere and probably the best place that we can put our seam line to mold this object. So now let's look at something that's a little bit more complex than a sphere and see what kind of other issues we can run into. So I have another sphere. Uh, this time it just has a few dimples around the edges. Nothing too crazy here. And we can see what the negative for that object looks like. And we'll do the exact same thing. We'll turn off perspective, hold that shift key to snap our view, and then I'll scroll down and click on group front yet again. We'll turn on polyframe with shift F and rotate around to the side. And this time we're not getting that nice clean seam line down the middle. Well, we are getting that, but we're also getting some areas here that are a little bit weird. So these areas are also facing that front view here from which we polygrouped with that group front button. But this time, this information is telling us that these are some areas that might run into some issue when we go to mold this object. Specifically for this object, we are probably going to have that get stuck in there. Now, of course, this is dependent on the material and tolerance and everything else being used here. But as a rule of thumb, we pretty much want to avoid anything that would cause a mold to lock as much as we can. So let's try to fix this and maybe find an angle that we can position this at to make it less likely to have the object get locked in the mold. So what I'm going to do is look at my object here from the side where I have that aligned with the mold. Maybe we can turn that on positive for a moment. And I'm just going to rotate this object around until maybe I find a little bit of a better placement. And I'm just going to kind of use my eye here and that looks a little bit better. So let's see what that does with our polygroup front button. So I'll scroll down, we'll do a group front, turn on polyframe, and we still have our old polygroups, so let's press Control w to get rid of those and do that one more time. 
And this time you can see that our mold line is no longer exactly straight. It's actually following around the the curves of this object. And that might be a little bit better for something like this object if we wanted to get a really clean mold, having that seam line flow up and around these humps. And you can see that there are still some little areas here that might cause a little bit of locking, but this is a much better result than what we were seeing previously with our last mold. So lastly, let's just turn off polyframe and turn that back on transparent and get a look in this mold to see where these areas of problem might occur. And just looking at this dead on, we can kind of see most of the object from this front view. You can maybe even go into your light menu and put that light a little bit more directly on your sphere to shine directly in there, get a little bit more evenly lit. And it doesn't look like there's going to be too many areas that will cause problems other than those few little dots here and there that are causing those extra little hits that might cause a little bit of mold locking if we were to try molding this object. So that polygroup front button is incredibly powerful for just kind of gauging your object's seam line and seeing where any issues are. Very quickly, let's look at one last object that's maybe a little bit more complicated so we can talk about some of the problems that might arise here. So here is a dragon that I sculpted, and I would like to maybe create a mold for this or figure out if I were to 3D print this, could I mold this object without any problems? So let's do the same thing that we did last time. We'll turn off perspective and snap our camera and click on that polygroup front button. All right, and we'll turn on polyframe with shift F and rotate around here to see where some of our major issues might be. So if I look at this from the top view, the first thing that I'm gonna see is our preferred seam line is probably gonna be something that follows the line of our spine a little bit more closely than something like a perfectly straight mold like what we have right now. And then the next thing that really stands out to me is the teeth. There seems to be a seam line running down and around all of these teeth. So for these teeth, we might wanna consider molding these from a different direction or maybe having these be a separate individual mold altogether. So there are a bunch of different issues here that are a little bit more complex for something like this. So the mold line again for something like this would probably not be able to be just straight across like what we would do for our sphere or our little bumpy sphere. For this, it's a little bit more complex, and to avoid all those different problems, the mold would have to be in multiple parts or possibly from a different angle. So that's a little information on molding and some quick ways that you can kind of test and figure out how your object should be best molded with a quick two-part mold using that group front button. And if you are interested in creating molds using that live Boolean feature, as long as you have your geometry set up and subtracting properly, all you have to do is go into your tool menu under Boolean and click on Make Boolean Mesh. If you found this video helpful, check out gumroad.com slash polygon for more tutorials, brushes, materials, and all the stuff that I use professionally to do my work. You guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.